Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have some fun. We're going to convert our electric throttle body to a manual throttle body. Then we're going to start working on our intake pipe, intake manifold, uh, and try and wrap up everything we need in the engine bay. Strap on in, because today is going to be a huge video obviously a whole day of work for me but only maybe 15 minutes for you uh, first we get started on our intake pipe so because we've changed the angle of the engine there's a lot less room between the intake manifold and the firewall so I had to cut this hose just a little bit shorter I'm gonna get that fitted with some hose clamps now next up we've got the little idle valve that sits just underneath that intake and yes of course you can go out and you can buy yourself a silicon hose but we're just going to take some scrap steel that i've got sitting in the workshop and we're going to machine that down and make sure that the idle valve uh, hose actually fits over it once we machine the pipe down to the right size i want to get a rib surface on there just so when we clamp down the hose, we can make sure it's not going to come off while it's under boost. A little refining and sanding of that fitting and it's ready to go. Next, we're going to refine the pipe just so we can fit on our three inch intake. To do this, I'm just going to use a flapper disc on my grinder, grind away a little bit there and get this pipe to match the curve of our three inch pipe. With that done, we can now get to drilling the hole. Starting off with a small hole and obviously stepping up in drill bits. Don't forget to clean out those burrs, not just on the outside, but also on the inside of the pipe. In preparation for welding, we're just going to grind down all the surfaces and smooth out any rough edges. Quick visual on the pipe, we can see that it fits perfectly, so time to get it welded in place. A quick trim with the grinder, we smooth off all the edges and our pipe is ready to be installed on the car. Job done, now let's get into the wiring. Wiring is probably going to be one of the largest jobs on this car, but the easiest thing to start with is the engine loom. Usually the BMW E36 has the engine loom sitting in the engine bay right on top of the motor. This is definitely not a place we want to have our wires. So 
So I've decided to remove a grommet out of the firewall and pass everything through the cold side of the engine, through the firewall and into the passenger footwell. Obviously, when you're relocating a whole wiring room that's from another car, there are a lot of wires all over the place. So I decided to take some time out and figure out where I wanted each wire to go. This was an absolute bird's nest of wires, including a lot of things that we're not gonna need. So I was just making sure that all the important bits and pieces were in the right place. I know for you this is only a couple of minutes, but this took approximately three hours of work just to figure out where all these wires were going to go. Once the wiring loom was sorted, it was time to zip tie it up underneath the dashboard. Also, I want to have the OBD port inside the car, whereas normally on a BMW E36, you'd find that in the engine bay. This will allow whoever is tuning the car to be able to plug into the OBD port just by sitting in the passenger seat. Okay, now we've got the engine wiring under control. Look, keeping in mind, we're only trying to get the engine running. So this isn't the final stage. Okay, so we've um, organized the loom. Uh, took a very, very long time. Organizing the loom, neatening up all the wiring, obviously relocating everything, because we, we want to try and keep as much of the loom out of the engine bay, keep it away from all the heat. Um, we've got the little intake pipe done with our idle valve pipe. Um, Obviously, now we have the wiring here for the airflow meter, so we'll get to that. But the issue that we've run into now is that this engine is out of an E36. Now, E36s were built from 1992 all the way through to, I believe, 1998. And these engines never had an electric throttle body. So the current issue that we have is that the E82 actually has an electronic throttle body or throttle I should say which was connected down there so what we need to do is figure out a way to get either an accelerator cable out of an E36 or maybe like a bike style um, brake cable and, and adapt that so I looked up the accelerator pedals on eBay online everywhere else they're about two to three hundred dollars and to be honest, I think it's a little bit much for something, I'm very excited, something that I totally could build myself. So here it is. So this was an old caster, caster wheel just from my bakery and, you know, chopped it up. And that used to be one of those jack handles that you use to, um, you know, just screw the jack up on a normal sort of standard car. All right, so we've chopped that off, so quite hard still. Uh, put a shaft in the center there, added a spring to make sure it goes back. So, and then went a little bit further and actually made myself an accelerator pedal. So, I mean, let you know, let me know what you think in the comments. So um, I'm very proud of this, to be honest. So next thing is gonna be, we need to figure out how that's gonna go um, mount in the car. So obviously gonna be somewhere around the back there. So. We still, obviously I haven't welded it together. I'm not too sure exactly where it needs to sit. Um, I do need to get the passenger seat in here out of one of our spare cars or one of our, we'll call it parts cars. Um, so I think accelerator pedal is gonna be the next big project. Once that's done, I think we're starting to run out of things to do as far as getting the engine running is concerned. Let's keep going. First thing was to figure out how we're gonna mount our accelerator pedal. After throwing in a couple of self-tapping screws, it was clear to see we'd found the right location for the accelerator. Making sure that the accelerator pedal doesn't touch the floor at full throttle.
To finalize the location, we just needed to test it with the driver's seat in place, just to make sure we were in the right location. We head over to our spare car, of course, pull out a spare seat and put it in our drift car. And of course, whether you're 4, 40 or 80 years old, you can't sing in a race car and not pretend to be driving. Confident that we have the right location for the accelerator pedal, it's time to get it welded in place. After making some adjustments, it was time to get the two parts welded together. Using my magical eye level, we can see it's quite straight. Considering this pedal is going to get stomped on a lot, I thought I'd better make it quite strong. On the other end of the accelerator pedal, I decided to go with three nuts. I've welded them in place and I'll explain to you why once we get it back to the car. After welding the nuts in place, obviously the heat can deform the threads, so we run a tap through those threads to make sure the bolts fit. All right, that pedal is all done. So here's the method to the madness. Just in the event 
that I'm not happy with the throttle response. That's why I've welded on those three nuts at different heights. So obviously different uh, lengths means different uh, reaction to the throttle. So we're just gonna mount this back in. Yes, we're just gonna leave it with self tappers for now. We will be coming back and we'll be going over the whole car. This is predominantly just to get the car running. I want this at home uh, and I want this as a runner. Uh, I've got a lot of cars at home, so I have to be able to drive them in and out of the garage. And also my wife will probably kill me otherwise. So thank you very much for watching all the way till now. I know there was a lot to take in, but I think I'm gonna call it quits for this video. I think that's plenty. Um, so if you're liking, loving the content, just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We will be moving full steam ahead on this build. Um, and I appreciate you all watching all the way to the end. So we'll see you in the next video.